Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking for protection and hedges and angels and can't run about us as we watch this film, Father. In the name of Jesus, I declare it, I prophesy, I decree, and I plead the blood in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. It's inroad into the American culture and the world population. He heard on the radio the news broadcast. And the mayor of Manila had asked that day for them to make a certain type of plea during the broadcast. There had been a young girl that was a prostitute, had been picked up by the police a few weeks before and taken to a local jail and prison, Villabad prison in Manila that's still there today. And they had put her in a cell. And uh, one night, after she had been placed in that cell and arrested, she said that she saw a dark, mystic type of cloud come through the window in her prison cell. It came through the window. It wasn't smoke. It wasn't any type of thing. It was an unusual type of mist. And it was dark, she said. And it came through the window of her cell and came over where she was on her bed, and it began to rest upon her. And after a few moments, uh, something inside of that mist began to bite her, bit her on her hand, on her shoulder, on her abdomen area, on her leg, began to bite her all over, and she began to scream at the top of her lungs. And so the guards came in, and, and, and they saw these bite marks over her arm and her neck and her face, and they lifted up her dress a little bit and saw it on her leg. And they called for the warden. And, and the warden uh, said, well, where's the doctor? And the doctor came rushing in there with his bag to see if he could help uh, this girl that had been bitten by, they thought, uh, an animal or an insect or a snake or something. Because they could see the saliva. They could see blood that, that had come because of the deep teeth marks in her skin. And, and they couldn't find what had bit her. And all of a sudden, uh, as the doctor w was administering his medical assistance to her, uh, a male voice spoke out of this young girl named Carlita and cursed him. And three days later, the doctor died. And when the doctor died, uh, the warden uh, realized this wasn't a medical problem or a, a mental problem. Uh, this was something in the supernatural arena. And he called for the Catholic priest that was in charge of uh, ministering at the prison. And he told the priest, uh, you know, this girl said she saw a dark mist come into her cell a week or so ago and it began to bite her. And she cursed up the doctor that was trying to help her and he died three days later. So uh, we, we hope you brought uh, your crucifix and your holy water and all the things to do an exorcism. And so the priest thought, ah, no problem. And he goes into the cell and uh, begins to perform a Catholic exorcism. And so uh, she sits there on the bed while he starts praying his little prayers and doing the crucifix and the holy water and all the stuff that they do. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, that thing again began to bite her all over. And she began to scream because of the pain of being bit all over her body. And toward the end uh, of her screaming, her, her voice changed from a little girl screaming out of pain to a, gal, a deep male voice that began to use profanity and cursed him and told him to die. Oh, three days later, he died too. So we have a little girl uh, that was picked up on the streets of Manila as a prostitute. Now being bitten by something nobody can see, but they can see the effects of the bite all over her body. And, 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 and when she speaks in a male voice, uh, people die. And that begin to be talked about uh, around the prison and through the police. Fear not. And it begin to spread through the city. And, and people begin to say, there's something supernaturally evil at that prison. And fear mm -hmm. begin to grip the city as it begin to be talked about on the radio and the newspaper. So that afternoon, when uh, the radio station had uh, accepted the request of the mayor to play the girl screaming and to make the appeal, is there anybody in Manila that can help us take care of 
of this unusual and strange scene at Bilbad Prison. Brother Summerall was studying his Bible and preparing a sermon uh, for uh, his Sunday morning message. And he said to himself when he heard the screaming on the radio and the appeal by the news announcer, uh, he said to himself, that's a devil. And the Lord said to him, uh, go take care of that. And Brother Summerall goes, no, I didn't come here to take care of devil. I came to here to build you a great church and I'm preparing my message to feed uh, the few members that I've got and to strengthen them so we can uh, build a great church for you. And the Lord said to him a few moments later, um, go take care of this. <laughs> and you got to know Brother Summerall's personality. He's not being rude. He's not being mean. He's just being Brother Summerall. Blunt. He mm -hmm. said, oh, Lord, I didn't leave South Bend, Indiana. Uh, to come here to deal with some crazy demon that's biting this little girl. Let somebody else do it. Uh, let me build you a great church. The third time the Lord came to him One, and two, said, three. I, I need you to go take <coughs> care of this situation Lord, with this young girl. He said, why me? And the Lord said to him, I don't have anybody else. There's nobody else. To deal with you. you know, sometimes you're the only person God has at that moment. To do what needs to be done or has the knowledge to know how to do what needs to be done at that very moment so when god starts speaking to you to do something or to get involved in something it may not be because uh there's 15 people you may be the only one that god has at that moment that knows how to deal with that situation correctly <laughs> to bring victory to the people that are being harmed in jesus he, he, he repented and said he was sorry and he got dressed the next morning in his what I call 1950s suit, it's in the 50s when this is happening. He travels down to the office of the mayor of Manila. He sits outside and waits for his time to see the mayor. And the mayor finally says, bring him in. And the mayor shakes his hand and said, uh, Reverend Summerall, I understand is your name? And he goes, yes. He goes, you're an American, right? He goes, yes, I'm a missionary from America. Uh, God sent me here to... Uh, bless your city and your people by building uh, a great full gospel church, and that's what I'm here for. But I heard your broadcast, and uh, I think I can help uh, you with this situation. And the mayor said, well, uh, you know, uh, two people have died to try to help me. And he goes, I can't have an American die. Uh, you know, if an American dies, it's trouble. Uh, that was back when being America meant something, that if you mess with an American, the American government would move heaven and earth to take care of its citizens. It's a little different today, but back then, being American meant something. Yeah. And he informed the mayor that he doesn't die easy and that he knew what he was doing. And You shall live and not calls, die. The mayor gave permission to, take up to be taken to Glory the prison God. where the young girl Carlita was being bitten by an unseen entity. When he got to the prison, he found that the newspaper people were there the warden was there, and all the policemen that could get in the room was there, and he walked in, and he had an audience. By this time, uh, all the papers uh, in the Philippines had sent newspaper men to write the story, and international people had begun to show up as well because it began to be spoken of in Europe and parts of South America and America. And so it began to be an international story. He walks in, and they introduce Dr. Summerall to Carlita. And he asked her a few questions. And while he was uh, asking the questions and having a small conversation, she began to scream at the top of, the top of her lungs and began to be bitten on her face and her neck and all over her body like she had before. The newspaper people were writing it down. What's going to happen? And he reaches out and he begins to address that force that we know is a demon power. And he begins to rebuke it and bind it in Jesus', in Jesus name, name. And the power Deliverance. of the blood of Jesus. And the battle the blood. for the freedom of Carlita and the freedom on of, of the city of Manila had begun. Hallelujah. And they go for several hours back and forth. And Glory later in the afternoon, Blessed Summerall said to me, he realized that this demon that he was dealing with was something to do with the prince of power that controlled Manila. And that he needed to fast and pray but it break its hold over Carlita and the great city of Manila. So he says goodbye to the, the warden and tells him, I'll be back in three days. 
The newspapers report round one, the devil loses because the preacher is still alive and he's not dead. Mm -hmm. He goes and finds one of his fellow Filipino pastors. And he says, I need you to come and fast three days and, and night and pray with me to get the strength to break the back of this spirit because I feel that it's a demon power that controls Manila and it's manifesting itself this way Son, and fighting this young girl. Laying on hands. After three Wisdom. days, Three nights of prayer and fasting. Asking, praying, he goes over to the prison. The newspaper men are back. Preaching, the warden teaching. is back. Everybody that can gets around that cell or the door so they can see what's going to happen. Is the American preacher going to die like the, the priest and the doctor? Mm. And he walks in, and the battle starts almost immediately with her cursing him with profanity and declaring uh, rude things that will happen to him and how he's going to die and his family is going to be cursed. Judgment, you and see? He to wrath, rise up with three days angels, of fasting and prayers. Serpents. Bring more faith and authority inside of mm -hmm. him. And they can to find You recognize it? And command mm -hmm. it to come out of her and let her be free in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And he goes back and forth for several hours and all of a sudden, the last command comes out of him. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. And she falls like dead on the floor. There it is. They when they collapse. Died. So the preacher dying. Don't give up. She died, they thought. Summerall goes over and saps her face a little bit and brings her back. And he says, now, Carlita, you're free now. He says, her face was Hallelujah. normal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! She was like in a daze and didn't know what had happened. Drunk of the spirit. And he said, now, Carlita, would you like to receive Jesus? Importation. And that girl that had been bitten by that demon power Lord God. received Jesus and the Holy Spirit in just a matter of moments. <laughs> and the glory of God hit the room, he said, to where the newspaper men got on their glory. knees and the warden and the Pile policemen and the other prisoners that were close by all got on their knees Woo! and they sang an old blood song. How great the blood of Jesus is. 